So, welcome back to the session on environmental regulation and instrument. So, if you remember in the last session we are discussing about the difference between the command and control approaches and the market based instrument then we have seen the different type of emission trading scheme how it works and we were discussing about the clean development mechanism. So, in this session we will discuss the market based instrument specifically that is um, existing in India one is PAT and second one is REC. But before that we will complete our discussion on clean development mechanism. So, as I told in the you in the last class that this is a part of the flexibility mechanism given by the Kyoto protocol. And here the flexibility in term of uh, in term of the operational um, operational flexibility given to the developed country or the NX1 country that how to how to achieve or how to meet the emission reduction target. And under CDM under this clean development mechanism the developed country can invest in the developing country any developing country where the cost of abatement is low and whatever the carbon permits they are generating from the investment in the developing country that can be part of their GHG emission target, GHG reduction target or it can be their compliance with their GHG reduction target. Now, the what happens in this clean development mechanism? It allow the government and the private entity in the developed country to implement the emission reduction project in developing country, receive credit in the form of the certified emission reduction that is CERs which they may use to meet their national reduction targets. Now, developed country they do this because the cost of reduction or the cost of abatement is low in the developing country. Now, the question comes why developing country allows or why developing country encourages the developed country to invest in their country. So, funds channel through CDM should assist the developing country in term of what? In term of their economic, social, environmental and sustainable development objective. Such as if the reduction project is being happening in the developing country, the benefit is clean air, clean water, improved land use, social or economic benefit like rural development, employment generation and poverty elevation. Because this is a source of income and employment opportunity because any investment uh, any investment has the implication for the economic employment and also economic uh, sorry the income. So, here the developing countries they take this funding or they take they comes under this flexibility mechanism because the benefit what they get over here is the economic benefit in term of employment opportunity, income opportunity and also the environmental benefit because if the em emission is reduced then that gives the clean air, water and the improved land use. Now, let us see the market based instrument which is existing in India. So, in 2011 the national action plan for climate change started under this and they have started 8 mission under this national action plan for climate change. And national mission for enhanced energy efficiency is one of these 8 mission which came under national plan action plan for climate change. And why this is this mission came to promote the market for the energy efficiency, fostering the innovation policies and effective market instrument and its root lie in the overall objective of the Energy Conservation Act 2001. Now, the instrument which comes under this NMEEE is known as PAT, this is a market based instrument known as Perform Achievement Trade Scheme. This is the flagship program launched by Bureau of Energy Efficiency to reduce the energy consumption and promote the enhanced energy efficiency among the specific energy intensive industry in the country. So, typically in case of traditional cap and trade system the caps are absolutes whereas in case of this instrument in case of this scheme PAT energy targets are intensity based rather than absolute one. 
Pilot ETS program which focus on abatement of particulates not CO2 being launched in 3 state Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Maharashtra. The first cycle of scheme from 2012 to 2015, they set the mandatory energy efficiency target on the 478 facilities means the plants or the factory that are either part of the energy intensive industry or the member of the electricity sector. This facility covered by PAT is called designated consumer or DC. The list of this facility is published annually by Bureau of Energy Efficiency. And what is the aim? The aim is to reduce emission by 26 million ton of CO2 equivalent as well as 6.6 .6 million tons of oil equivalent and the first commitment period that is 2011 started but it is 2012 to 2015. Energy efficiency targets are measured in term of specific energy consumption for which the baseline are determined by April 2007 to March 2010 average. Now an installation that fulfills and exceeds its SEC target will be able to sell energy saving certificates. So whatever the if they are whatever the targets they are given if the if they are saving more than that then they can sell the energy saving certificate which is known as the escort. So, the name of the commodity in this trading scheme is escort and they can sell if they have achieved more than the energy saving targets given by the regulator. Trading will occur by regulated exchanges, platform for trading exchange are designated two power exchange one is IEX and second one is the PXIL. Company that purchase escorts would do so in order to achieve compliance obligation and avoid the non-compliance penalty. So this is what the uh, process for this escort, escort exchange process that how typically this is being traded in case of the power exchange. So pilot ex, uh, ETS that is this uh, uh, environmental trading scheme started in February 1st 2011 in 3 states that is Gujarat and Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra by the, the then environmental minister Jairam Ramesh and it launched by Indian MOE, uh, Indians MOEF that is Ministry of Environment and Finance later which become MOEFCC when we, they incorporated the responsibility for the climate change. Central Pollution Control Board and relevant state pollution control board. And regulatory framework and technical capacity to implement ETS in India is based on Environmental Protection Act of 1986. Here each state pollution control board would be responsible for the facility coming under their state. Here the they will determine which pollutant to include set caps for the industry facility based on the desired overall pollutant concentration. State regulator will then distribution emission permits to the cap facility which have the option either complying to the caps or selling the extra permits or buying from the market the amount of permit by which they exceed their cap. There are two fold uh, objectives for this. This is the cost effective method for the emission mitigation and it spurs innovation means if you look at if the simple uh, simple decision point what I was trying to explain in the last class also which one gives you which one is more cost effective whether making changes the process bringing innovation bringing technology will lead to more cost or when you are buying the permits from the uh, market rather than reducing on the own which one will cost more and whatever the least cost effective that is typically being taken by the company. So, in the cycle 1 it was applicable to 8 energy intensive sector, there are about 478 numbers of DC accounting almost 33 percent of the India's primary energy consumption. Then it is and interestingly in cycle 1 they overachieved and the whatever is being planned as the targets whatever is being planned as the goal that they overachieved in cycle 1 and one of the criticism comes because of because of this overachievement is that possibly whatever the targets given for the energy saving it was much more below the, the capability of the industry. Then part cycle 2 which is from 2006 to 2018 and 19 includes 3 sectors that is petroleum refinery, discom and railways 
along with the previous 8 energy intensive sector of the part cycle 1. They aim to achieve an overall energy consumption reduction of 8.869 million metric, metric ton equivalent. Now, part cycle 3 that is from 2017 to 20 along with all this uh, previous disease they also include 116 new units under it and they have been given the reduction target of 1.06 million tons of the oil equivalent. Now, the second market based instrument what is being used in India is renewable energy credit system that is REC. So, this started in November 2010 and the primary purpose is to promote the renewable energy even in region that have low potential for the renewable power generation. The aim of this mechanism is to contribute significantly to the renewable energy generation goal and this is being outlined by National Action Plan on Climate Change and Energy Act of 2003. Ministry of Power regulates this REC mechanism, State Regulatory Commission SCRC set the targets for the power company to purchase certain percentage of the total power from the renewable sources. And the targets what they give is that the renewable purchase obligation standard. So, whatever the certain purchase or certain percentage of the total power which should come from renewable that gives as the renewable purchase obligation standard that is RPO. The cover entity may trade REC either within or across state. Now here what would be the trading mechanism? So, there is a renewable purchase obligation standard is given to each of the industry. If they are using more of renewable energy beyond the target then they have the surplus standard. The surplus standard they can sell it to the other industry who are using or who are using less renewable uh, energy whatever given in the target. So, cover entity may trade REC either within or across state to comply with their RPO or profit from the surplus of REC. Each REC represent about one type of the or the cover type of the renewable energy that is solar, wind, small scale hydro, biomass based power, biofuel and municipal waste based power and the purchase of REC treated as corresponding to the quantity of the renewable power. So, the typical example is that if I am buying 25 megawatt of solar uh, of this REC then it will be considered that the industry is using 25 megawatt of solar in their production process. As a result, facilities are able to meet their renewable energy targets even if the local time climate is not well settled for the renewable energy generation. So, the simple way to understand this is that there is a purchase renewable purchase obligation is given to the industry. If they cannot generate then or if they cannot generate cannot use in their production process they need to buy the equivalent amount of the renewable purchase or renewable usage in the form of the REC and if they are buying the permit then that would be considered that the part of their consumption of the in the form of the renewable energy. This is also some this is also traded through the power exchange that is IEX and PXIL and the uh, uh, the floor price, the range of the floor price and the ceiling price for this REC will be determined by the CRC that is Central Electricity Regulation Committee. Now, what are the challenges and issues when it comes to market based instrument in India? There is always a political reluctance to create an ATS because there is a fear or there is a apprehension that such policy could hinder the economic development. Then the second uh, challenge when it comes to market based instrument is that there is a need to build its capacity to improve the data collection and supply of trained manpower to implement the ETS effectively. Then non-compliance penalty are relatively weak. So, if someone is not complying to the standard typically there is a whatever the penalty is given that those are very weak. So, they could fail to incentivize the compliance. And PAT is the first kind of it kind set market system and enhancing the energy efficiency in the developing world. So, it will take some time to set and that one good thing is that already the third cycle is there for the PAT. Then few other country especially the developing country have three national market 
environmental program that is PAT, REC and CDM they are active with the potential to reduce the GHG. But CDM is no more, in, no more operational mostly so if you look at the market based instrument mostly this is with PAT and REC that is that exist in India. So, in the next session we will try to see what are the different environmental laws related to the which contributes to the sustainability and also little bit about the disclosure regulation um, in order to understand what are the what are the changes that has happened over a period of time for the disclosure regulation. Thank you.